Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy and in today's video We're gonna be going over some risers and fallers based upon their ADP swings over the last month inside of today's video We'll begin by discussing three players who are rising up the draft board right now And then about halfway into the video We'll be pivoting into three players that are falling down the draft board But before we could get into things I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help us out a ton and if you would like to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get into some adp risers and fallers over the last month so like i said off the rip of the video we'll begin with the risers and my first riser in adp is going to be jameson crowder wide receiver of the buffalo bills last month his adp was pick 169.8 overall today he is coming off the board at pick 134.7 based upon underdog adp that is a 35.1 pick swing and I think the reason behind this movement is because people are starting to realize that there is definitely a chance that Jamison Crowder could be the number two wide receiver in this offense for the Buffalo Bills. Now, last year, Stefan Diggs was the main guy. He was the clear number one. But outside of Stefan Diggs, they had some games where you would see Cole Beasley pop off. Other games, you'd see Emmanuel Sanders in the playoffs. If you remember up against the Chiefs, you saw Gabe Davis go to absolute pound town with the Chiefs, even though they ultimately lost that game. So there were a couple of guys that were revolving around that number two spot. They didn't really have a clear number two guy. And this year, based upon current ADP, everyone and their mother is drafting Gabe Davis highly. Gabe Davis is a top 60 pick in a majority of drafts right now. But what I think people are starting to understand is that while Jamison Crowder is not the most elite wide receiver in the NFL, everyone knows that, he does have the upside to potentially slot in as the number two guy there. And he was just going way too late, right? Pick 169.8. In some leagues, that's basically close to being undrafted if you're playing in a redraft fantasy football league. Now his ADP has skyrocketed up to pick 134.7, which I think is a pretty safe range to take Jamison Crowder. If you believe, like myself, that there are going to be weeks in the season where Jamison Crowder is the number two wide receiver on this team, and there are going to be games that the Buffalo Bills are going to be in that are certified firefights mean there's going to be games where they are just scoring a bunch of points the other team scoring a bunch of points and it is a back and forth affair and Jamison Crowder could really take advantage of the situation he is in in those games now last year Jamison Crowder was on the Jets playing in 12 games finishing as the wide receiver number 68 and half PPR and the wide receiver number 65 and half PPR points per game he finished with 72 targets 6.0 per game 52nd at wide receiver 51 receptions 4.3 per game 47th 447 receiving yards, 76 that wide receiver, and he scored two total touchdowns, 79th at the wide receiver position. The big difference here is obviously going from a Jets team that was pretty fucking bad last year to a Buffalo Bills offense that you can make the argument is the best offense in the NFL. Maybe you don't believe that, but there's an argument to make that the Bills are the best offense in the NFL with potentially the best quarterback in the NFL. Now, again, am I 100% sure that Jameson Crowder is going to 100% be the number two wide receiver in Buffalo? No, I'm not 100% saying that, but I am saying with the chance of that happening based upon where he is going, I am very excited about Jameson Crowder. Now, this whole video isn't just me talking about guys that I love that are rising up the draft board or guys that I hate that are falling down the draft board. It is just players that I thought would be very interesting to talk about. But in terms of Jamison Crowder, I am very interested in drafting him based upon his current ADP again, pick 134.7. Next up, we'll move to another riser of the draft board, and that is going to be running back of the Indianapolis Colts, Naheem Hines. Last month's ADP was pick 172 overall. Today's ADP is 141.8 overall, which is a 30 Point two pick swing. And I think the reason why Naheem Hines had this humongous rise over the last month is because a couple of weeks ago, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, Frank Reich, goes out there and says, hey, 
If I was to be playing fantasy football, I would want Naheem Hines on my team. I would be drafting Naheem Hines, which could be telling us that maybe Naheem Hines is going to keep that role that he had last year, maybe get a slightly increased role and potentially steal away, suck away, siphon away some value from Jonathan Taylor. Now, in 2021, Naheem Hines played in 17 games, finished as the running back 53 and half PPR and the running back number 67 and half PPR points per game, tied with Justin Jackson. He had 56 carries, 3.3 per game, finishing 67th. He had 276 rushing yards, 16.2 per game, ranking 62nd, 57 receptions, 3.4 per game, ranking 12th at running back. 40 receptions, 2.4 per game, 21st, 310 receiving yards, 22nd, and three total touchdowns, 46th at running back. Now, his statistics from last year would tell you that you probably don't need to be getting overly excited at what Frank Reich said, right? Because last year, he wasn't all that involved, right? He was getting the targets, but he's not necessarily going to be in there getting 100 carries, right? When Jonathan Taylor is healthy, they're going to jam the rock with Jonathan Taylor. Now, what is this going to look like in 2022? Maybe people are reading, in my opinion, too much into what Frank Reich said. I understand why you might want to draft Naheem Hines, because if you have Jonathan Taylor, then boom, you got the handcuff. If JT goes down, then you can throw in Naheem Hines, and you know that he's going to be pretty reliable. He's not going to put up crazy fucking Jonathan Taylor numbers, but he's probably going to be all right. Like, it won't hurt. Like, it's going to hurt that you lost Jonathan Taylor, right? But it's not going to be a stab to the heart, right? It's not going to be that bad. But at the same time, with how Frank Reich was saying that, it makes me think that people are really fucking overreacting, right? A 30.2 pick swing because of one quote from Frank Reich. Do we really believe that Naheem Hines is going to OJ Simpson style take a knife and cut into Naheem Hines' value? To me, that sounds absurd. That sounds insane. So, would I draft Naheem Hines if I had Jonathan Taylor? Maybe. Am I fine taking a shot at him at the end of the draft? Definitely. But am I just running up to the draft board, slapping the fucking sticker onto the board if you're drafting in real life to draft Naheem Hines? No. Am I smashing my keyboard or smashing my mouse, pressing draft on Naheem Hines? No. I'm not. I think people read too much into that quote from Frank Reich. Before we got into the final riser up the draft board right now, before we move into the fallers, I'd like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor of today's video, and that is going to be Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best the single best place to play fantasy football this summer. The Best Ball 3 Mania Tournament has $10 million in total prize money. You just draft your team, and that's it. There's no waivers, no trades, no in-season management. My favorite part about fantasy football is the fucking draft. I love drafting the team. The best day of the year is your fantasy football draft, at least for me. So now all you got to do is draft it. You set it and you forget it. The computer will automatically put in the best lineup for you. You don't even have to adjust the team. And then the team with the highest score at the end of the year is going to win. And again, you don't even have to do anything during the year. You just draft it. There's no waivers, no trades. And then, boom, you could end the year winning $2 million as the winner of the Best Ball Mania 3 tournament. Last year's Best Ball Mania champion drafted in June. So there is no reason to wait until August. You can do it in June and take home that big prize pool. Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 when you use promo code AWESOMO, A-W-E-S-E-M-O, and that's good for four entries into the Best Ball Mania 3 tournament or 20 entries into the smaller puppy tournament. Head on over to the website, underdogfantasy.com, or on the App Store, or just click on the link in the video description down below and sign up using promo code AWESOMO today. So my final player who has been rising up the draft boards over the last month is Mike Williams, wide receiver of the Los Angeles Chargers. Last month's ADP, he was picked 48.4 overall. Today, he's currently coming off the board to pick 29.5, which is an 18.9 pick swing. Last year, Mike Williams came out the gate of the season on fire, and then he kind of skidded out. 
right? 2021 stats, 16 games played, wide receiver 10 and a half PPR, wide receiver number 12 and a half PPR points per game, tied with Mr. T. Higgins. He had 129 targets, 8.1 per game, 14th at wide receiver, 76 receptions, 4.8 per game, 24th at wide receiver, 1,146 receiving yards, 71.6 per game, 11th at wide receiver, and nine total touchdowns, 10th at the wide receiver position. If you don't believe me or you don't seem to remember what happened last season or you weren't playing fantasy football last season, I am going to read off his weekly finishes throughout the season. Week one up against Washington, he was wide receiver 14. Week two against Dallas, wide receiver 10. Week three against the Chiefs, wide receiver number one. And then after that, after those first three weeks, things started to get really fucking dicey for Mike Williams. Week four up against the Las Vegas Raiders. He scored two points, wide receiver 105. Then the next week against Cleveland, wide receiver number two. Then after that, wide receiver 73, 78, 46, 45. Then he bounces back. He finally bounces back after weeks of failure in week 11 up against Pittsburgh. He took Witherspoon and absolutely carved him up, wide receiver 10. And then wide receiver 50, 20, 40, 46, 27. So those couple of games where he played really fucking well, heavily swung the pendulum on Mike Williams' points at the end of the season. Mike Williams, in a lot of games last year, you were pulling your hair out starting this guy. And it was very difficult week in, week out to determine whether you wanted to start Mike Williams or not. It was really difficult because you couldn't even really determine when to start him because the matchup, because in these like really good matchups, he would falter And then he'd have like a harder matchup and play really good. It was really confusing with Mike Williams last year. And his ADP reflects him being in the third round, early third round pick, moving up again 18.9 spots, originally going at pick 48.4, now pick 29.5. People are starting to think that Mike Williams is going to be very consistent. That has to be why he's moving up the draft board. Now, as a whole, the offense on the Chargers is pretty similar to last year. The offensive line is better. The defense is better. But what about that tells you that Mike Williams is now magically going to become very consistent? Now, the upside with Mike Williams is fucking immense because if he does become consistent, then he could potentially scorch his way past. He could move past Keenan Allen in the offense. But there's also a chance that every game is a lot like last season you're sitting there trying to figure out, Nick, when do I start Mike Williams? And I'm like, dude, it's, fu-, or ma'am, if, if you're a female, this is fucking confusing. I don't know when to start him. It is going to potentially make you hate having Mike Williams. So while his ADP has moved, I'm not necessarily 100% in the boat that you should be drafting him at pick 29.5. I'm not 100% sold in on Mike Williams in terms of redraft fantasy football. In best ball, it's all fine and dandy because you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to think about when you start Mike Williams. He just enters into your lineup, smashes the defense, and then when he shits the bed, it's okay because you have someone else get inserted into the lineup because it automatically sets it for you. You don't have to think about it prior to the week. You don't have to do any thought process on that. Whereas in a redraft league, you do. And with the inconsistencies of Mike Williams from the past, I just don't feel comfortable taking him where he's going off the board right now. Despite the high accolades from last season, 129 targets, 8.1 per game, 14th at wide receiver, 76 receptions, 4.8 per game, 24th, 1,146 receiving yards, 11th, and 9 total touchdowns, those stats simply just do not tell the story of the season for Mike Williams. And I, for one, am nervous on Mike Williams and don't feel comfortable taking him there in redraft. In best ball, I understand it. Completely understand it because, again, you don't have to think about it don't have to figure out when he's going to fuck up, when he's going to win you your week. You don't have to determine that. But a redraft, you do. So in redraft, I am very right now off of Mike Williams. I just don't really see it. So now we move on in to the fallers. The players that were getting drafted a little bit earlier now falling down, going down in the draft board. Starting with Ryan Tannehill, quarterback of the Le Titans, the Tennessee Titans. Last month, his ADP was pick 152.3 overall, so he wasn't like a high draft pick, but now his ADP is pick 181 overall, 28.7 pick movement. And why has his ADP moved in the last month? Not too sure. Not too sure, because A.J. Brown got traded prior to last month. 
What is so concerning for people as to why Ryan Tannehill has moved down the board? What is it? I have no idea. I have no idea. Because if you wanted to shift Ryan Tannehill down the draft board, you would have done it the second A.J. Brown got his ass shipped off Philadelphia. So why did it move more? I don't know. I don't know. But Nick, he's in a run-heavy offense. Blah, 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 blah. Last year, he was the quarterback 12. The quarterback 12. And he finished his quarterback 16 in points per game. I understand he lost A.J. Brown. I understand they drafted Malik Willis, but there is no worry in my mind. I sense through, I look through the whole brain, there's not even an ounce, a teensy bit of worry that Ryan Tannehill is going to lose his fucking job to Malik Willis. If Malik Willis got drafted in the first round by the Titans, then yeah. But he didn't. He didn't. Ryan Tannehill doesn't have A.J. Brown. But he has Robert Woods. He has Traylon Burks. And I understand Robert Woods is not the best. I understand Traylon Burks is a rookie. I understand he's on a run-heavy team. But look, Tannehill dealt with much worse situations last year. Julio was always hurt, and A.J. Brown missed a lot of time. And he was still the quarterback 12, quarterback 16 in points per game. He had 531 passing attempts, 31.2 per game, 12th at quarterback, 3,734 passing yards, 16th, a 67.2% completion percentage, 21 passing touchdowns at a 4% rate, which is very low. I expect that to get closer to the 5% number. 16th at quarterback, 14 INTs, which is fucking bad. 21 passing touchdowns, 14 INTs. But he had 55 carries, 270 rushing yards, and 7 rushing touchdowns, number 2 at quarterback. In 2022, it is very easy to see a bounce back for Tannehill. Do I have Tannehill ranked inside the top 12? No, because I don't think you need to rank him there. Could I see him finishing inside the top 12? Yes. People are seeming to forget how good Ryan Tannehill has been when there wasn't all these injuries around him. His fucking running back, the key piece, the biggest focal point in this offense, Derrick Henry, got hurt last year. Derrick Henry was healthy, that would have helped out Ryan Tannehill. And I understand Derrick Henry is not this pass-catching running back. He's not. He's not Christian McCaffrey. He's not Najee Harris. He's not Austin Eckler. He's not Alvin Kamara. He's not Aaron Jones. Any of these running backs you want to list off, right? He's not that guy. But he is one of the best running backs in the NFL. And the team took a dip dive in a fucking duck off the edge of the earth after he got hurt. Ryan Tannehill will bounce back in 2022. You better believe that. So why is he falling? It makes no sense. Makes no sense. Really doesn't. Next up, we'll move to a running back, Antonio Gibison, running back of the Washington Commanders. Last month's ADP, pick 40.4 overall. Now, today, coming off the board at pick 66.2, a 25.8 pick movement, pick swing. Very interesting. Gibson was a guy last year who was propped up heavily. Didn't pay off. Now we're looking at a situation where Gibson might be in a three-back committee. Where Gibson might be getting cucked by Brian Robinson and J.D. McKissick. Last year, in 16 games, he finishes as the running back 10 and half PPR and the running back number 19 and half PPR points per game. He had 258 carries, 16.1 per game ranking, fourth at running back, 1,037 uh, rushing yards, I should say, 1,037 rushing yards, 64.8 per game, sixth at running back, 52 targets, 3.3 per game, 22nd, 42 receptions, 2.6 per game, 16th, 294 receiving yards, 18.4 per game, 24th, and 10 total touchdowns, 8th at running back. I am starting to get worried about Antonio Gibson. Now the thing is, while I am worried about this being a potential committee, while I am worried about Antonio Gibson potentially getting hit with the 6-1 fucking 9 Rey Mysterio by the other running backs around him, he has now fallen to the point where you almost have to take a shot on him. You almost have to take the chance that maybe that doesn't happen. And maybe he is a top 12 running back in fantasy football because he does still have the talent. It's not like the talent has been pushed away. The talent is just gone for Antonio Gibson. It's just the situation itself is a little bit scary. And I'll agree, the situation is scary. When Riverboat Ron, the way he talks about the team, about the committee system, it seems worrisome for Antonio Gibson. And the thing is, even with those worries, now he's not a top four round pick. He's not a top three round, top two round pick. He's picked 66.2. 
And when you're in that range of the draft, I'm fine taking a shot in it on Antonio Gibson. If I've already drafted two running backs up to that point, and Antonio Gibson's my third running back, then wow, the sky's the limit for Gibson. Because if Gibson doesn't work out, it's okay. You still got other guys. Whereas in the past, you've had to draft Antonio Gibson as the guy, the running back on your team, the number one guy on your team, basically every single fucking time. And now you don't have to do that. Even at pick 40.4, there was some thought in my mind like, you know what, I'm fine taking the shot on him there. I can see the reasoning as to why you may like him. I see the talent. I don't love the team. I don't love the running back situation around him because I think he could genuinely get completely skull-fucked by the other running backs around him. But there is still the chance, and this is a big but, Kim Kardashian style, that he could still be the number one guy on the team. So a pick 66.2, that seems outrageous to me. I'm going to draft him there. Now, again, I understand the risk in it. I understand that he could get completely screwed by the other backs around him. But I think he's talented enough to where at pick 66.2, you just got to take the shot on him. Final player to discuss in today's video, my final Baller is going to be Gus Bus Edwards, running back of the Baltimore Ravens. Current underdog ADP is pick 169.8 overall. Last month, he was going to pick 156.7, a 13.1 pick movement. Why is Gus Edwards falling? Why? I understand he didn't play last year. His stats are from 2020 because last year he got hurt. Basically, every fucking running back on the Ravens got hurt last year. So in 2020, he plays in 16 games with J.K. Dobbins, 35, running back 35 and a half PPR, 47 and a half PPR points per game, tied with Carlos Hyde, 144 carries, 9 per game, 28th at running back, 723 rushing yards, 45.2 per game, 19th, 13 targets, not very good, right? That's like running back 78, 9 receptions, running back 79, 129 receiving yards, 53rd, and 6 total touchdowns, 25th. Now I understand there's all this hype about J.K. Dobbins. And I'm a J.K. Dobbins guy. I like drafting J.K. Dobbins. But why is Gus Edwards falling? This is a team that is going to be running at a very high clip in the National Football League. This is going to be potentially one of the most run-heavy offenses in all of the fucking NFL. They might be the most run-heavy team in the NFL. And Gus Edwards is coming off the board at pick 169.8 overall. I understand. Oh, Nick, he's just a handcuff. He kind of is. But if you're down bad at running back, if you're drafting these receivers early, you're waiting on running back, you got to take the shot on Gus Edwards. Because if Dobbins struggles early on, you better believe Gus Edwards could eat heavily into that workload. He's going to eat into it if Dobbins struggles. And if Dobbins was to get hurt, knock on wood, I'm not rooting for injuries. I don't root for injuries. But if he was to get hurt, Gus Edwards would be catapulted into the number one spot in the offense at the running back position on one of the most run-heavy teams in the NFL. It is a no-brainer to select Gus Edwards. No-brainer. And yet, his ADP is falling. It's not rising, it's falling. Doesn't make much sense, does it? So let me know down below what you guys think about all these players. Did you have fun? Have a great time? I hope you did. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you check out Underdog Fantasy promo code AWESEMO. A-W-E-S-E-M-O, pointing to it right now on the screen for a $100 first match deposit bonus. Love you guys so much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your guys' day. I hope you liked today's video. I had a really fun time. So, Love you guys all. Hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, guys, good boy.